Hey everybody, welcome back. Ruben with Texas All Water Fishing. I just want to wish you and your family a great holiday. I hope you all have a Merry Christmas. I hope Santa Claus brings you all the fishing gear you put on your list. And I hope you're on his good list and not his naughty list. Okay, so I have been asked recently about winter fishing can you still catch fish during the winter time specifically i've been asked about fishing in the marsh as well and the answer is yes so i'm going to share with you three things that are going to help you during this winter time during this winter season that we're having right now that will help you and put you on those fish Okay, so what we want to look at is water depth. Now, during the cold time of the year, during the winter, the water temperature is going to drop. What that's going to do is that's going to make the fish in the area drop deeper to warmer water. Doesn't mean that you got to look out and you can only fish places where it's like 10, 12, 14 feet deep, although those areas are very good. It just simply means that that particular area where you're where the fish are located they're going to seek out deeper water i will look for anything more than three feet of depth or more it's going to be warmer down there the fish are going to run to deeper water and that's where you're going to locate them at those drop off and those deep points so look for those deep cuts those deep passes you have a lot of them that coming out of the, some of the subdivisions that run along in the flat areas. You, you'll have those deeper holes and those deeper cuts. So you can use some of the apps and some of the tools that you find online to locate some of these areas. If you're not familiar with them, or just simply look at Google Map and Google Earth, and you could pretty much tell what a deeper area looks like versus a shallow area when you are planning your next trip out. Okay, now the second tip is the sun. The sun is going to warm up a lot of areas faster than it will warm up other areas, such as dark, shallow, muddy bottoms, shells, and oysters. Okay, that is going to hone in. That is going to harness the energy of the sun and heat up the area around it, and it's going to make the fish and the bait fish and the bait shrimp more active so what that will do is as it heats up the fish become more active they will start rising and coming into the shallower areas into the flats that's why the flats or flatter areas or shallow areas are still good to fish because especially if they have a channel a boat cut or a deep hole around them because all that bait and all that activity of that bait is going to move into some of the more grassy areas the grass lines or if you have flats with grassy bottoms they're going to move in there feeling a little more safe and those reds and those trout and those predator fish are going to come out to seek out that bait the reds will belly down in that mud and as well as the flounder and even the specks will kind of hang out on bottom where that muddy soft mud is going to be that real dark nasty mud that stinks then that's going to hold a lot of warmth and heat up that water around them even bulkheads now i know a lot of people will launch and fish around neighborhoods now you have that bulkhead area that concrete area one time i was out and i wasn't catching anything at all it was very cold it was colder than i expected it to be it had a little bit of sun here and there kind of kind of poke its head out but it wasn't enough to really warm up the water so one of the things that i thought about was concrete the cement the concrete that that typically heats up very hot during the summertime so i started i was launched near a subdivision so i went to the subdivision and i started fishing all the concrete areas around there which i'm glad i did because I ended up catching a few fish where I wasn't catching anything at all. Now I am catching fish. So that was a great day. Hooked up to a nice red and even, believe, maybe I think two flounders. So three slots. Hey, I was a happy camper. But yes, fish those bulkheads around the 
neighborhoods, the subdivisions, and also down there, there's also a lot of oyster, oyster that is found on some of that bulkhead too. So it's a win-win fishing some of that structure. All right, so the third tip is wind and current. Well, now when it comes to the wind, I always like to fish the area that the wind is coming from. So I fish that side of the bank. So if I am fishing, for instance, Galveston, West Bay, and we have a north wind, then I'm going to seek out some areas that are coming from that north side. I might actually just fish way on the other side, on the Tiki side, rather than be down uh, across the causeway. Now, if it's a south wind, then I would obviously be on the other side of the causeway. So I will try to fish as much protected areas as much protected from the wind as possible for the simple fact that it's just going to be warmer. That being said, yes, wind pushes bait, bait fish into the grass onto the side. So yes, you will catch a lot of fish on a windblown side. But I've had my most I've had most of my success during the winter fishing the protected side just for the simple fact that it's going to be warmer. And that also leads us to water current. So when you have water current, whether it's a tide moving or it is wind coming around a point or a turn, that is always a great spot to fish. Not only will the water current on a bend make that area deeper, but it also offers that water movement that fish and bait fish really like Predator fish will sit there and wait for some of the bait fish to move through the area, to get pushed through the area in some of that little current. It doesn't have to be strong current. It can be very, very subtle current. But that predator fish will wait there and wait for the bait fish, and hopefully your lure will attract that guy and you'll be able to hook up. So wind and current play a lot during the winter time as well. Okay, so one more thing that I want to discuss is the bite. Now, during the winter time, you will have a slow bite. Not only will you not realize or feel or think, was that a fish? But sometimes you may not even <laughs> you may not even realize it, and you miss your strike. You miss your opportunity to hook up because it can be extremely subtle. Recently, I went out, last two videos is one trip, I went out and we just crushed the reds. Now, the water temp was like 52, 54 degrees. It was pretty cold, pretty chilly day, pretty chilly morning. And the reds were very subtle bite. You just feel like a thump. You're swimming your lure back, straight retrieve, and you feel a thump. And then I would slow it down. I would slow it down or just stop and just let it fall. And when it fell, you feel the thump again, and then you go to set your hook, and boom, they're there. You reel in. Sometimes they swim at you because the water current was moving, pulling out, and you go to set your hook, and boom, it's very, very subtle. Trout do the same thing. They will will bite your lure, and they'll they'll just give it a little nip, and you got to you almost have to v you almost have to hesitate. You almost have to hesitate, just like hesitate your your, your hook set. Because you got to give them time to slurp that lure up so you can so they can get to the jig head. If not, what happens? They bite it, you rip it off, and it's called a short bite, and you got half a lure, and that's frustrating because not only you're wasting lures, but you also miss an opportunity on a very good strike. So slow it down, slow your fishing down. Uh, sometimes you can go with a lure that is a slow faller more suspended lure that will slowly fall to the bottom like a corky sometimes you what i do is i will switch my jig head up i will go to a lighter jig head that will slow fall i have i know some friends that won't even use a jig head they will use like a j hook or something like that that's not even weighted or you just put a split weight on their lure just to or on their line maybe about a foot away or even a chatter weight about a foot away so you can still get that weighted you still get that weighted drop effect as the lure slowly falls to the bottom but yes it is a slow bite during the winter time quite often 
those reds, like I said before, will be bellying down in that mud if it's a very cold day. So you drag your lure on the bottom very slow and try to get them to bite. I have seen trout even act this way in the West Bay where it's deeper holes. They're on the bottom. They're in that mud. They're just trying to get any kind of warmth. And you just very subtly move that lure on the bottom of the surface and you will get that reaction strike that you're looking for to be able to hook up. All right, so, you know, as a recap, water depth's important, the sun heating up the surface areas to heat up the water, so it's gonna be, a lot of times it's gonna be a later bite and a more afternoon bite. I'm not saying you can't go in the morning. I still go in the morning and I'll grind it out and I'll find that window where the reds are, are the flounder or the trout are eating, those predator fish are eating. I'll find that window where that water is just moving just right and the water temp is just right, gives that right mix where I find that window and I'm able to hook up. So water depth, the sun heating up the water, those dark areas that get heated up, those shell, those those rocky bottoms, the shell, those oyster bottoms, that muddy bottom, wind and current always play a factor, whether it's winter or not winter, but it's going to it really help you sometimes, give you that little bit of edge of fighting, finding and locating the fish, especially during the winter time. And don't forget about that slow bite. Just take it easy slow it down sometimes sometimes you have to slow it to a crawl you know scent and sound you have those chatter weights you have those those popping corks you have the 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 you have the voodoo with the shrimp with the rattle in them the voodoo with the shad with the rattle in them so and also your sense your procure bite and fight makes a it's like a oil based scent roller that you can roll on your bait you can check those out as well and as well as buying this bait that is scented you know people ask me does a chatter weight does a sound help does a scent help and you know what it doesn't hurt right i mean i look for any advantage especially during the winter time when it can be a grind especially in the winter time when you don't have those telltale signs you don't have those fish that are just exploding on bait telling you hey i'm here and you don't just have those big schools of bait running through so you don't know where the bait is and you don't know where the fish are and actually they're just sometimes they're just in deeper pockets below you and you go right over them or you fish right past them so any little thing helps and i hope this helps you get out there and fish during the winter time dress in layers keep warm have a great holiday, and hopefully next time you catch me hooking up. Thanks.